Let me show you what this bad boy can do. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Titanium Man Garage. And today I have a 2004 Polaris Sportsman 500. I decided uh, I'm going to go through the whole process of what I do when I tear something apart. The story behind this is uh, a guy thinks the engine locked up. I'm just wondering if it's a piston, so we're going to be tearing that engine apart. But first of all, I'm going to take the plastics off and show you guys how I do it. There's a lot of guys that uh, they won't take the headlight pot off and they'll try to get the plastics off around it. and They say it's a pain in the butt. And if you do it the right way, it's actually really easy to get the front fenders off. Um, takes me like 15 to 20 minutes. So you don't need a lot of tools um, to take the front end apart. Uh, I've got the rack off already. It gets uh, a T25. So I already disassembled that. That pops off. Four screws. Now I'm going to take the uh, bumper off so I can get the plastics. So I'm going to unplug the lights. And you grab a half inch socket, go to town taking the bumper off. Now this has a wench on it, so I'm gonna have to watch out where the wires go. Or a lot of times I just set the bumper on the bucket. Whatever works. And this did have a front brush guard on it, so. Got longer bolts, but these are the half inch. Take that off. There's two bolts on this side, two bolts on the other. I could always just disconnect the, the two bolts, the two wires from the, the wench right here. But I'm feeling lazy, so I'm not going to do that. on a tray so I know what goes where afterwards. I'm going to take a 3S. Bolt here and bolt here which I see is missing. Um, I think the guy had this apart before. And there's a nut with the bolt at the bottom of the fender here so we're going to get that off. Which always makes things worse because the guy messed with it, you don't know what he did wrong. <laughs> well, I guess we're going to find out. These up here. There will be a couple more 3 ace bolts going up the Fender flare, I'm only taking half of those off, and then I'll do the other side. That. 
a little screw and not have slimy bolsters. This is on the fender. This is all. That was the bolt of that. That's funny. Makes my job easier. The guy pulled the uh, clutch off because that was actually a good idea. He wanted to know what the noise was. He thought the clutch was making noise. So he immediately pulled the clutch off and then uh, went from there. Realized that it wasn't the clutch. Couple bolts here. I had it was too big of a job for him to handle. So he stole it to me. Plastics are free. I'm going to take that cover off. And for some of you that have never done this, take pictures of how the wires and the throttle and choke cable go. Because I've seen so many guys take this apart, and then the choke cable was wrapped around goofy, and then the guy couldn't figure out why it idled bad. You always want to try to put it back the way it was, as you're going to have uh, issues with your throttle cable. sensor from the speedo and there's another clip here that you press it in and it unplugs that from the speedo. This is where it starts to get a little tricky because uh, there's little rubber bands on the light. Just pop it off that clip, one on each side. And then what I do is take the key out, take this nut off and just let that hang loose and you can unplug the light and pop that out. And then uh, once you get your choke cable unscrewed, two screws down here, there's one on this side, one on this side, and we're gonna slide that thing out. All right, I know the lighting isn't that great in here today, so just have to bear with me. Huh, and then that, huh. Like I said, guy took it apart again, the uh, little rubber band on the headlights missing. Plug the headlight, the little clips. That's disconnected. You can use a one inch wrench on plastic nut, get that loose. You got the plastic nut off. I think it's one eighth on the choke. Or you can just use a Players, but I like using this. So for me, I I just like getting all the plastics out of the way. I'll take the gas tank off. That way I can drain the gas if there's any bad gas in there. that ignition switch in and I'll pull up on this headlight. Just Those two screws I showed you, I'm gonna take those out and then plug the cigarette lighter. So this is a long video. You guys ready for a long video? It's Friday for me, so I might have to have a beer while I'm doing this.
But when you're self-employed, every day is Friday, right? <laughs> Watch your wires and your clips so you don't want to break any plastic clips off. Alright, so everything's free. I take the gas cap off. I should be able to pull the plastic off. Like I said, if you haven't done this before, this is your chance to take pictures. See you know where everything goes back together. much nicer, you just take the toolbox off, pull the plastics back, and boom, you're done. Alright, so I'm going to take the fuel tank off. And that is a T25 Torx head for the, the bolts. So let me show you my little trick on how I like to get the gas tank off. Without removing too many fuel lines. So you take this little screw out. I already got it loose. Pull that off. Remove this plastic nut. Oh, and you should probably make sure your fuel shut off too, which I'm gonna do quick. There. Fuel's off. The nut off. Unplug your fuel line from the pulse pump, which I have the clip disconnected already. And of course the fuel shutoff does not work because it's leaking. So hold on a minute. Put yourself a vice grips or hose clamp onto that. So I'll push out. And there's wiring in the way. That'll push out while I'm lifting up on this. I'm gonna have to cut these tire wraps because the guy's got the winch on here. And then the whole thing should pull right out. Hooey! I'll tell ya, you'll know if this thing's got bad gas because it really stinks in here. And not that kind. Stale old gas probably has ethyl, uh, ethanol in it. Remember my lazy part? Once I got the fenders off, I mounted that back in place through a bolt in just to hold it in. Tank is now off. Um, if you do have a fuel sending unit, you'll have to unplug that before you take the tank out. Look at that. Ha. Yeah, that's why it didn't start. <laughs> that's kind of funny. Alright, so I'm going to start tearing this thing apart. Yeah, I think I'm going to first start with taking the rocker cover off. See what I got going on, see if this thing turns over freely. And go from there and just start disassembling the engine. Take the exhaust off. I get that footboard out of the way. All right, so here's what I'm finding out so far. Pull the uh, start rope and feel like a little, I don't know, a little tiny clunk in there. So I'm gonna tear this top end apart and see if it's the piston skirt. Maybe there's chunks at the bottom of the case. Uh, I don't know, but I got it half ripped apart already. Got the exhaust off, drain the coolants. Um, in the middle of taking the timing chain off, I took the tensioner off. Just pull that out. I'm gonna pull that gear out. 
You got two 10 millimeter bolts here, and then this is a 12.14 millimeter. I'm gonna pull them off. And we're gonna pull the jug off and see what I got. All right, so my battery went dead, which is kind of unfortunate. I would have showed how to take this apart. But, uh, explain the bolts. You need the uh, 14 millimeter for the top heads. Took the timing chain sprocket off. It's two eight millimeters here. Now I'm gonna pop that jug off. Also on the other side, there's uh, two 17 millimeter bolts that go to the oil lines and then unplug the wire going to the head for the uh, temperature sensor. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this off. Now keep in mind, I'm thinking I'm pretty much gonna have to tear the bottom end out. So I'm not worried about the timing chain. Um, if I thought I'd just have to do a top end, I would make sure I hung this up and got it right. But um, let's see what we got here. And I also found out the, uh, the ground wire from the top of the engine was missing. Uh, it goes to the uh, motor mount to the frame. So somebody must have rebuilt this already. We're gonna see what we got. <clears throat> One more thing. I forgot to take this hose off. That came out. Cylinder looks good. Oh. Yep. The connecting rod on the crankshaft. I guess you in here. It looks really burnt. This is stiff. It's not even moving. So yeah, we're looking at a bottom end here. So that was my issue. So the guy was correct, something in the bottom end. What I did notice was there was a lot of fuel in the uh, oil reservoir. I pulled the, uh, the dipstick out and it was over full and there was a lot of fuel in there. So that was telling me that the oil was pretty thinned out. My guess is the carb probably leaked and when your carb leaks, it leaks right into the cylinder, goes to the bottom of the engine, thins out your oil, and this is what you get, end result. All right, see how that's all burnt down here? This, this is stiff, it won't even, won't even turn. So connecting rod bearings are toast. I could just get away with um, putting a new crankshaft in, but I do have a bunch of bottom ends and if you've uh, been watching my channel, you know how I like to take 425s and convert them into a 500. I think they're a little more snappier, so I think I'm gonna do that. Uh, I prefer that, you know, I'm not saying you should do that. That's just my preference. All right guys, so I figured it out. Pulled the pull start cover off, the Bendex gear. It's literally stuck open. Flywheel is so rusted. If you look back here, it's nasty. The guy swamped this thing. Water got in there and rusted everything tight. Should have known better when I saw it, uh, when I went to pick it up and uh, actually it was the border of Wisconsin, snowing out. I was sitting under a foot of snow. Guy never covered it up, never protected it, didn't do anything. So either he swamped it or you just let it sit out in the snow. I don't know. My guess would be swamping it. So here's a lot of stuff going on here. The pickup coil's rusty. It's 
So I'm going to pull that flywheel off, inspect the starter, inspect the stator. Yeah, I'm just basically going to tear this whole bottom end out. All right, let's get that rusty flywheel pulled off. Shot a little PB blaster in there first. Try to loosen up. Now I'll see if I can get this thing to pop. It's like that. Ooh, that thing's dirty. Look at that. It's all crusty. Have to clean that up. I just got to take the two bolts off the back. Take the stator out, hang it up somewhere, and this engine's ready to pull. Right, don't forget to pull your oil lines from the engine. Got two of them. And this is what I disconnected here with the 17 mil. This bad boy's ready to pull. Who wants to watch me pull out an engine? Oh, and by the way, it's a lot easier if you take the top end off first, get the engine out. Uh, especially if you're going to do a major rebuild like this. Comes out like a big piece of grease sliding down a hot tin roof. Got my uh, 425 and my 500 engine sitting there. Don't know what's wrong with those yet, but I'm going to strip them down. Uh, ideally, I'm going to take the 425 and build it. Um, have to see how that goes. See what it looks like inside. All right, let's see how oily I get. Put this strip bucket here, get the rest of the coolant out. Starter's disconnected. Easy peasy. And I'll probably clean up all this crap underneath here. You pressure wash it. I mean, this machine's pretty clean. Oh, I see I got a broken motor mount. Be replacing that too. That's just laying there. So let's build some engines. Let me show you what I got going on with this uh, engine that I pulled out of the 04. Connecting rod shot. I don't know if you can see in there. It's stiff, it won't turn until it was overheated. Like I said, the guy probably uh, has carb leaking and all the fuel ran into the oil, thinned out the oil, overheated the, um, the crank and the connecting rod. So I talked about building a 425 into a 500 and I've done this about four times. I was warned one year, I think it's like a one year only, won't convert to a 500 and I happened to stumble across it. This I believe is a 1996. The hole's a little different. Um, I've got a good 500 motor here. You can see how the opening in the, the case is bigger than that one. So just to kind of warn you guys, I've posted videos in the past about converting a 425 into a 500. Um, not all years will work. So, so I'm going to take this 500, got her all cleaned up. Piston's good. It was actually pulled from a uh, unit that uh, a friend of mine, he buys them and he parts them out. The guy said the motor didn't run really well. Well, I tore this thing apart. This thing is clean as a whistle. The piston rings, the piston's good. Cylinder's good. Let me show you why. So here's the reason why it ran like crap. Um, you've seen some of my older videos. I've talked about replacing rubber fuel lines, rubber vent lines, everything. So this is the rubber vent line that goes on the engine here. Well, it was soft, it folded over. It probably collapsed. And made it, the motor run like crap. So, bonus for me because this motor is in excellent condition. So I'm just gonna hone out the jug and rebuild it. All right, so I got a bucket. Spray a little cutting oil in there. I'm gonna do this 
very gently. You about 10 times in an hour parts. Not sure if you can see that in the camera. Got really good uh, crosshairs on the cylinder wall. I'm gonna clean this up and install it. All right, ready to slap this thing together? I am. What I like to do is uh, take a little oil and throw it in the cylinder. Just kind of lube everything up. So that Piston slides in the cylinder real nice. Got my base gasket here. And now the fun part. Doing this two people is a little easier. One person, not so easy. I do have a piston ring compressor here. So I haven't decided if I'm going to do that or if I'm going to use my fingers. Sometimes I've been lucky if I can use my hands. I got a pretty tight grip. Squeeze the rings in and slide the jug on. Sometimes it doesn't work. So let's see what happens. Maybe I'll get lucky. Yeah, and for the tricky part, got that out. I can shove this in. Nice. I also had a screwdriver in here. I screwdriver in to kind of lock the connecting rod in place so it'll move. Now I'll put my four bolts in. Put them off. These get torqued down to 49 to 50 foot-pounds. these back on go there go there and what I like to do is now that I got the new uh, piston in clean up my oil a little bit I'll check the action it's up and down good all right so at this point, 
I like to put everything on the engine as much as I can before I put it in. So I put my hose on here, make sure your oil lines are tightened up and they're fastened on. And one thing I'm liking about this, this is a, um, this engine, the cylinder was bored over already, 0.25, which is great. More power, more power, I love it. So I'm gonna put this on. I'm actually gonna install the engine just like that into the, the wheeler, and then I'm gonna put the head on top of it. Uh, I found out it's lighter, it's easier to handle. Uh, you can build the whole engine and try to weasel it in, but it's kind of a pain. Um, but that's just what I like to do. I found a couple shortcuts over the years. And uh, also by judging by the, the piston and the cylinder, it looks like there's barely maybe a thousand miles on the rebuild. I'm not really concerned about it. There, there was a lot of carbon deposits on the top of the piston, which I cleaned off. Ideally, you'd want to install a new piston. And uh, if your cylinder looked bad, you'd want it bored out or at least honed out. But after seeing how uh, the last engine was, I got a good feeling about this. Done this a couple times before. I mean, this is gonna be my own personal four-wheeler, so if something goes wrong with it, no biggie. I could always tear it back down and rebuild it. And once I install the engine, I'll I use the air gun, blow everything off, clean the surface off. Make sure everything's clean before I install the head gasket. All right, let's get on it. So I hooked up this hose too, because that's such a pain in the butt to get in. Let's throw her in. So much easier. bolts in with that plate. Good. There's actually access holes in the frame underneath. Now I'll go ahead and put my oil lines right away. Get everything done as much as you can before you get everything back together. It makes life a lot easier. <clears throat> Alright guys. I've built quite a few engines and I've gone over this a bunch of times. Um, I always uh, recommend going to my uh, video that I have. Uh, I'll, I'll post a link for it, how to build an engine, but I'll go over the torquing sequence for the head. So it's, uh, I don't know, a couple step process. It's uh, first I'm gonna go with 22 foot pounds, crisscross pattern. Underneath. 52. Yeah, it's kind of goofy because you gotta tighten it, then loosen it, then tighten it, then loosen it. Get 22 foot pounds, so then tighten it to 52 foot pounds. Then you loosen quarter turn and another quarter turn. And then you tighten it to 11 foot pounds. And then you mark it and it's a half turn and a half turn. So 
You notice I'm doing it in a crisscross pattern. 11. There you go. Now, I know you can only see the top two bolts. Right here. Right here, and then I mark the bottom two bolts. Half turn in, and another half turn in. That's why I put the marks on. It's a half. So I watched this video years ago, and the guy that was doing the, the head gasket said, oh, just torque it down to 52 pounds and you'll be good. I messaged him a year later. Hey, how did it hold up? <laughs> Guess what? He never replied. Probably leaked. All right, there we go. Another trick I like to do after uh, an engine build is now that I got this far, I'll put my motor mounts on. And before I put my stator on, I'll tilt this wheeler on an angle like this. And with a funnel, I'll pour like a quart of oil in here. That way there's already oil in the engine. When you go to fire it up, it's already pre-lubed. And like you saw, I did put oil in the cylinder already. So when this thing fires up, it's not firing up dry. All right guys, here we have it. Fresh rebuild, went through the uh, coolant system, burped the uh, air out of the, the coolant, made sure the uh, TPS was adjusted correctly after cleaning the car, otherwise the uh, kill switch to the lap fire, show you what this bad boy does. Do you clean your carb and install your cables? Make sure there's a gap in here. A lot of guys will clean their carbs and forget about this, and the gap will be closed. There's a little turn thing here, so if I turn this all the way in, see now it's closed, it won't start. Turn this out. Make sure you got a little gap in there. Make sure you got a little finger play in here. Step one. Step two, burp the system. I had the radiator cap off. I let it run for about 10 minutes. Got all the air out of the system, made sure the fan kicked in. I believe at uh, 165, 170, she kicked in. Um, also, uh, seeing it was a fresh rebuild, I also turned it on, let it run for five minutes, shut it off. Let it cool down, start it up, let it run for another five minutes, and then it's good to go. I want to make sure I got oil through the whole engine before letting it run, letting it rip. And I just need an air filter, and this bad boy is ready to go back together. I'm not crazy about that camouflage purple. Some guys like it, some don't. I'm not a fan of it, but my son likes it, so this one I'm probably going to keep and put the purple back on and let her rip. Alright guys, hope you liked this video, tearing down a 500 engine, rebuilding it. Got a couple odds and ends to finish up here. Get her all buttoned up and put her back together. Alright, thumbs up if you liked the video, and like always, till next time.